And we are back with Ian Dench of EMF. So um, we were talking about Unbelievable. Did you guys uh, know or kind of have a feeling that song was going to be the hit while recording it in the studio? Like, was there a feeling with the energy of the song that was like, this is this is it. We got it. I don't, no, I don't think so. I mean, it was meant to be the, like, a cool underground first page to single. Um, and we recorded it by itself first with a, um, a great young engineer who hadn't had a hit record before because we were waiting for the big producer to do the album and who was going to do all the hits. And we just spent, you know, a few days, it was only like two or three days recording it. And, and, um, and I can remember when, it, when, when we finished it, I, I can remember saying to Jane, I'm not sure if it's right because we didn't really know quite what we sounded like on record. We'd never done any proper recordings before. Um, so, uh, you know, we had no, uh, really no idea. So you guys reached number one in the U.S. with that song. Now, did you already have a tour set for the U.S. at that point, or did the success of that album and that song kind of trigger a, a tour? I, I, no, we had a tour plan. We had, and if, if anything, you know, the, we were playing like a thousand capacity venues, but the day that we started the tour, the record went number one. We, I think we started the tour in Montreal and drove in to the States across the border just as we heard it had gone number one. And we started a six week tour. We, I think Chicago was the next show. Um, and, you know, we could have probably have done a bigger tour, but everything was sold out, you know, by that time. And, and we just had the best six weeks. You know, we were all, I, I mean, I think I was 25, uh, um, James and Mark were 21, and Derry and Zach were like 18, you know, 19, and so it was just like, we just had a whale of a time. And, now, you've and, gone on to have a great songwriting career outside of EMF, and have been, and, and have been writing some notable hits. Uh, a big one for Beyonce and Shakira with Beautiful Liar. How did that opportunity come about? And, and yeah, let, let me ask that first. How did that opportunity come about? Well, uh, when um, I should mention here, you know, Amanda Ghost. So I've worked with Amanda Ghost a lot. When, when uh, we parted our separate ways with EMF, um, I met Amanda and we started writing um, some songs together uh, for her album. And then she met James Blunt, wrote You're Beautiful, and um, and she said short, shortly after that she got a phone call from somebody. She said to me, "This I just got a phone call from this guy, and he says he wants me to write a song for Beyonce." And you know, and I just I can't believe this. So you know, will you come with me? Let's go and check this guy out. And off we went to this address in New York. We happened to be in New York, and and, uh, um, and we and it was, lo and behold, it was the Universal Building. And we went to meet this guy called Tata Smith and. He's like, yeah, I want you to write a song for Beyonce. And we're like, well, you know, Amanda sort of went, you know, well, I don't really write songs for other people. You know, I'm, I'm an artist and I, I, uh, um, you know, and I, that, you know, the James Blunt thing was just a, was just a one off, you know. And, and he's like, well, hang, no, no, come on. There's somebody I want you to meet. And in walks Beyonce and Jay-Z. And we were like, whoa. And, and Beyonce said, you know, we'd love you to, to write a song and, and uh, Amanda becomes kind like, of yeah, tough I, to say no at that point. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, be shit. And, but Amanda said, like, well, you know, I don't really write songs for other people. Maybe I could get to know you and write a song. And Beyonce was like, I'm sorry, I ain't got the time for that. But we've got this great backing track. And, you know, we booked the studio for eight o'clock tonight. Write us a song. And we were like, whoa. And so Amanda and I went back to the hotel and, uh, and wrote Beautiful Liar just there and then. And we went in at and that's the first time I think we'd written a song quite so quickly because you know when you're in a band you start an idea you work, try it this way you try it that way and that was the first taste of pop songwriting and and so we um which was great fun you know it's something that happened so quickly it's incredible and and then after that we spent a while writing songs we wrote Tattoo for Jordan Sparks um and uh Gypsy for Shakira and wrote a bunch of songs on, on um, 
I am Sasha Fierce. We wrote um, Ave Maria, which was uh, great and had a, had a wonderful time doing that. And, so yeah. was the genre of that album easy for you to write within, or I guess was it more or less challenging than some of your other writing projects? I think, I think what I've got um, interested in, and I, and I think why I'm still in the music industry now and what was relevant to everything was I loved about how to try and make the words of songs connect. And I think that was as relevant for EMF as it was for Beyonce. And, and you know, you're trying to be able to connect emotionally with something. And, and so, in a sense, genre is, is immaterial. And, you know, you're trying to do something that touches people. And, you know, I've ended up, I've worked with um, Liam from The Prodigy and, uh, um, uh, and Ian Brown uh, from The Stone Roses just because you want to try and do things that mean something and with pe interesting people. And, um, and, uh, and it was interesting. It was an interesting exercise writing pop songs for, for people of that stature, that, because you're trying to find that, that thing that means something to people, but it's also sort of personal to the singer. And, 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 and that was just as relevant for Beyonce and, as it was for, for, you know, James and I in, in, in EMF. Well, it's also um, got to sound right coming out of the artist's mouth, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though they're your words, it's still got to match their persona, or at least yeah, perceived absolutely. persona. That's the truth. And I think that's something Beyonce was really good at doing. She, she you know, she, she'd be like, okay, play me some songs, what you got, what you got. And if she liked something, she was very good at making it her own. And, and uh, she, she, you know, she, and it would be a, a subtle change. I mean, just when she sings it, she makes it her own. But she'd be like, there would be certain lyrics. She'd be like, I can't sing that. That's that's not me. And so we'd work on something else. Um, so Ian, um, where can we? Where can people go to follow you and EMF? Uh, and is there anything in the, in the works for EMF uh, in the, in the future now? Well, it's our thirtieth anniversary year. Uh, it. I think a couple of weeks ago, uh, Schubert did, came out 30 years ago, and uh, we've done a box set. Um, and uh, if you go to emftheband.com uh, and Twitter, Instagram, you, you can follow us. We're going to do a show in London for our 30th anniversary show in, in uh, December. And James and I are writing some new songs. So hopefully before long, you, you will... Uh, Let's get some some new EMF. So um, just just yeah, follow us uh, online, and, and we will have something for you. Um, where can people follow you online? EMFTheBands.com, uh, uh, and that'll take you to Instagram, Facebook, and um, uh, and Twitter, which uh, to our um, uh, social media. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Ian Dench of EMF. Thank you.